Do fitness trackers help or hinder? Last year, the global fitness tracker market was valued at around $39.5 billion, and its forecast is to reach $187.2 billion by 2032. Fitness trackers can give us a wealth of data, but do we really need one at all? And can our relationship with them veer into the unhealthy and obsessive? In this episode, we break down the pros and cons of trackers, give you a balanced view, and as always, offer tips to reset your tracker relationship so you are back in control rather than the other way round. Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Midlife Mentors with me James. And me Claire. We're a little bit late with this one again, aren't we? But we're getting it out there. We're doing it. That's the most important thing. Perfection I think we need to record two this week Claire so we get back back on track, back on schedule. These normally come out on a Saturday but it's it's not perfection, it's progress. That's what we tell everyone. So we're still getting it out there. So we're really, really excited to share this podcast with you. Because James actually got featured in an article. Where was it you got featured uh, in this? This is in Runner's World. That's right. And it's a conversation James and I have a lot between us, but also a conversation I have a lot with my with our clients, but also my one-to-one clients, around fitness trackers and wearables. Um, and what we think about these and our opinions and our thoughts on this. So we're super excited to share this with you. What else have we been up to? Well, I was going to say, the other, we... the other thing was, because I saw um, a good friend uh, at the weekend, and he's wearing a tracker. Oh. Uh, yeah. And he was kind of like, oh, it's telling me that I've overreached, and now I need to have 90 hours of recovery. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean it's telling you to like do do basically nothing for 90 hours? And he was like, yes. And I'm like, mm, that doesn't sound right. So... This is where we can become overly reliant on these. So I think it's really timely to talk about that. It was kind of a personal example that came to me this weekend. Yeah, and um, I was I get asked all the time what I think about them. <laughs> and again, this is our opinion of this. And we're going to share a very balanced approach to fitness trackers here. And then we're going to end up, like we always do, pretty much always do, is with like five tips at the end. Mm. Five tips on how to use them to your advantage rather than being ruled by them. But what have we been up to? We went down to Devon. We had a lovely couple of days down in Exmouth. It was lovely down there. I feel that was probably the reason we were late with the podcast. It is a bit. We kind of relaxed. It was terrible weather when we drove down there. Absolutely hammering it down. And then it just got lovely. And we had a lovely sunrise walk and a run on Saturday morning. And a sunrise swim in the sea. And a sunrise swim. It wasn't too cold. No, it was actually it was, warmer it was than Hampstead Heath Ponds. Yeah. And if you're in the UK, of course, you'll know that um, we had the most miserable summer. You know, June promised a lot. And then July <laughs> and August were just wet and rainy all the time. But we've now got a week of 30 degrees incoming. So And this amazing. is particularly lovely because we've shut all of our windows in our London flat because it gets a little bit noisy sometimes. So you can imagine how hot we are right now with the windows closed and the sun blazing in. But uh, we're doing it for for you guys. Um, The other thing we've got coming up, actually, I meant to say, we've got Soho House this week, haven't we? Oh, my goodness. So we're doing a series of talks through the autumn at Soho House in London for their members. Um, And we're doing our first one on Wednesday on midlife transitions. And it's sold out. Sold out. Waiting list only. It has. And we've got another one coming up, but we won't reveal that just yet. Um, So if you're... We are going to be... We've actually got a few tickets, okay, to... I'm announcing this completely segue off because James will probably look at me and go, what are you doing? But we we do actually have some complimentary tickets for that event at Soho House on Wednesday evening. And we, if you're not part of our Midlife Mentors Facebook community, jump in there. The link is in the show notes. If you're not in there, jump in because I'm going to announce actually something a little bit later on today about how you are going to be able to grab one of those free tickets. We've only got like three left. So I'm going this to is be... brilliant. I know nothing about this. No, I know. That's why he's looking at me. Guess who does all the social media stuff? Um, so I'm going to be announcing a little bit later how, you know, I know it's a little bit last minute, but if you are in London or around about London and fancy 
getting your hands on a ticket to our event at Soho House, which is a members only club. Um, jump into the community and I'll be announcing a little bit later on how you might get your hands on one of those spaces or two of those Exciting. spaces. Exciting. Yes, I know. We James, can see us in the flesh. James is looking excited. Yes, exactly. Meet us in the flesh. Anyway, that's about it on our news. So yeah. let's dive in. We've kind of given a, an overview of why yeah. this is important to us, but it can be super confusing. And I think people, because we're in fitness and health, people automatically think, that we are into our fitness trackers. And here's the thing, we have tried them. So I just want to give you an example, like why this is so, I suppose so close to my heart, because this was my experience. We actually bought, we had whoop straps, didn't we? Mm. So really, really in-depth information. Whoop straps are really, Amazing really information. incredible information. And this is about two and a half years ago now, maybe a little bit more. And James and I wore them. And for me, personally, I found it super, super intrusive. I found it, re- I, I became very obsessive about it. And I know James won't mind me t- telling everyone that he became super obsessive about it as well. Um, and for me, it was mainly around my sleep. So I'd get up in the morning and rather than just thinking, oh, have I had a good night's sleep here? Was last night a good night's sleep? I'd wake up, wait for my data to load on the whoop strap for it to tell me whether I'd had a good night's sleep. And guess what? When it told me I hadn't slept well, which is most of the time, it just brought my mood down for the rest of the day. And I'd be like, oh, I thought I had a really good night's sleep last night, but actually it turns out I didn't. What's that going to mean for my training? I'm not going to be as strong. You make all these assumptions suddenly based off what the wearable is saying. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, why this is so important is obviously we've seen, I guess, I guess we're at ch- talking about the first fitness tracker. I was just thinking about this while you were talking oh, actually. Yeah. The first fitness tracker would have been the stopwatch, right? It's like, how, how fast did I run that distance with the oh, no, stopwatch? Right. And then that would have been it. That was, that was a very simple metric. And obviously, as technology has evolved, um, they've got more and more. So uh, it's valued around $39.5 billion, the, the fitness tracker market, Which is at nuts. the moment. But it's forecast but in 2032, so 10 years now, to be $187.2 billion. And I'm sure we're going to see things like you know AI integrating with fitness trackers as well, so it will coach you and all the rest of it. So it's going to grow. There's going to be more out there. There's going to be more data out there. I think the trick is to know how we can avoid being overwhelmed by this, how we can use these things to our advantage rather than letting them start to dictate our training and indeed facets of our lives as well. Yeah, because I do think people are very, very surprised when the amount of training that we do, the amount of lifting we do and all of that kind of stuff that we don't wear fitness trackers and and wearables. And like I said, for me, it just disconnected me from my body. Mm. It disconnected me from knowing my own self. It disconnected me from the joy of just going and exercising for the sake of it without actually looking, how many calories have I burned? How, you know, what's my heart rate? How hard have I pushed myself here? It actually just took away the pleasure and the joy of just doing it for, for the fun of it. Mm. And, and that to me is so, so important because I can be, you know, my backgrounds um, with my body, with body dysmorphia, you know, you, I can get very, very obsessive about things like that. But what a beautiful thing, actually, and I could give myself massive kudos for this, of understanding that that was not something that was serving me well and actually would start ruining my experience of just loving my body, connecting with my body, going for a run without tracking it all the time and comparing myself to the run that I did before or comparing myself to the workout I did before, comparing myself to other people. So, yeah, I, I would say that's what my main reason, just jumping in here, my main reason of why I personally don't particularly like having one on my wrist. Yeah. I would say there's a caveat there, Claire, in that, that we, we are, we've done so much training over so many years. Yes. We're very in tune with our bodies yeah. and it's very um, intuitive for us to know how we're feeling and whether we, we have overtrained or not and when we need a recovery. That's a good point. I think, you know, this is, I guess this is one of the pros, we're going to come on, we're basically going to do the pros and cons of them. I guess one of the pros is, you know, if you're not at that stage yet where you're kind of knowing your, your body well in a good relationship with it, they can give you a guide um, to what's going on. So maybe, maybe let's just jump in the pros here. So um, uh, the Lancet did a study, published study last year. Uh, it was a systematic review, results from like um, 160K plus participants across all age groups. And it showed that, that wearing a tracker helped people exercise for approximately 40 minutes extra a day and improved their physical activity long term. So that's great. You know, just the simple act of wearing a tracker 
I think because you become more aware of, of your movement or lack of it will actually increase how much you move, which is which is a great benefit. I guess this goes back to you know when they first came out the ten thousand steps. Oh, the ten. By the way, the arbitrary, team, complete... it's completely arbitrary. It's a completely made up number. Someone was just saying, what sounds good? Ten thousand. Seriously, it's, it's a good number to head for in a day. I though. know, but seriously, did you know that team out there? Did you know that completely arbitrary number? It's it's not based on any scientific <laughs> facts at all, but it does. It gets people moving. Have you done the ten thousand yeah. steps today? So it's created awareness, which is a great great thing. Um, but actually, it also helps. Another real pro um, to wearing a wearable is that it helps you set targets. Mm. So it helps you push the boundaries of what you've done before, right? Because otherwise, we can become quite stagnated. Yeah. And actually, one of the things that we see a lot is people stagnate because they're not progressing themselves. So a, a tracker actually helps you create new targets and push you which is which we want to be doing you, you know the mental benefits of that as well are huge not just the yeah. physical we're going to come on to that it's about um, one of the things we're going to cover is like you know w- what data are you looking at and how are you using it so that's something really important to know um another big benefit of them is that they can give you updates on like quite crucial health markers so so not all of them obviously but many trackers will actually alert you if there's a potential health issue in your body like a heart issue so that's again i know they have saved lives there's been cases um trackers can be set if your heart rate goes over a certain level they'll actually send an alert or phone phone a contact to let them know you potentially could be in trouble so they are potential lifesavers as well but i am laughing at that because there's also a negative implication of that and it just that makes you worry you worry all the time yeah. you become a real worry wart so that's another thing that Maybe. Oh, my heart rate's 210. Yeah, What's going what on? fear. The fear. Oh, you know, like constantly checking your health. Anyway, the other thing is that it actually really, really helps with accountability. Mm. So over time, our motivation, discipline uh, is likely to wane. But when we're accountable to somebody or something else, like a fitness tracker, we're more likely to succeed at achieving a certain goal. So it's, it does hold you accountable, but... It might slip over into obsession. Yeah, I'm going to say that, again, that accountability, there's two levels, aren't there? It's kind of just looking at data yourself and going, oh, you know, I've, I've done it, tick that off. But so many people share this data. So it's like a double-edged sword. So that's like public accountability, which is, but also that can lead into, into comparison. And we're going to talk about the negatives in a minute. So let, let's go there. Let's go against the cons. Well, the first one is accuracy, all right? If I was to strap on five different um, trackers mm. and go for a 5K run, they're all going to give me different data about the, the distance I've run, the calories I've burned, you know, everything's running on its own algorithm. So we need to be aware, first of all, that we're getting indicative data for a lot of the stuff there. We shouldn't take it all as gospel. Exactly. And it is easy to be overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, what are you actually looking at here? And what does it actually mean? I, I, I wonder how many of us have really, really dived into what it means, what the data actually means. Um, and it can be really, really easy to get overwhelmed and again, I suppose that that obsession and that that fearful, uh, the the fear might come in that I don't know what all of this means. Is it important? Is it not? Um, is this another thing that I'm adding to my life? In an overwhelmed, over technology fied, it's not even a word. It, well, I like it. That should technology be a word. Technology fied. Um, it is just I find technology overwhelming anyway, and I think this is another reason that I don't wear one is it's just another lot of data that I I don't necessarily need. Owning our own business, there is data all the time. Being on social media, there's just technology, there's data, there's information overload. And this was another thing that was just an information overload mm. to me. So just be careful you're not being too overwhelmed. Yeah. By it. And you know what the data means. And yeah. if you don't, ask someone. Exactly. And I think you know, as technology obviously grows at an exponential rate it's easy for that tracker to start giving you more and more and yeah. more data um across different fields i think i think the key is really to know like what what is your goal and what's the mat- metric or metrics that map to that goal so say so what's the thing that you are tracking be really clear on that and how you're using that data to then like take you towards that goal the next one is the expectation effect. Massive. So this is kind of what I was talking about when I was saying I'd wake up in the morning and think I've had a good night's sleep. And actually my whoop was telling me that I hadn't slept very well. And the expectation effect, we've done a whole podcast on this, which was utterly amazing. If you haven't listened to the podcast on the expectation effect, it is basically what we expect happens. Okay, so if I expect that my workout's not going to be as great because I haven't slept as well, guess what's going to happen? my workout isn't going to be as good. And this is backed by all the science. So if you want all the science on this, go and listen to that podcast. It's absolutely fascinating. It's really interesting, actually. So the science on that is that there's multiple studies and they show that um, if you've had a good night's sleep, 
but you think or you're told that you've had a bad night's sleep, your performance will actually be worse than if yeah. you actually had had a bad night's sleep. Someone told you it was a good night's sleep. Yeah. So, of course, if you wake up and your straps like or your device is like you had a bad night's sleep, that's going to knock on into your day. Yeah. Also, there's the, the failure effect. So, mm. basically, if you... If you have not performed as well in a certain day and your strap is telling you you've not performed as well in a certain day, the expectation it might be that the next day might not be great. And that actually maybe you, you start making all these assumptions, like maybe you've lost your mojo, maybe you've lost your strength, maybe you've lost it. You know, and all of this this data is actually kind of pushing you to have certain expectations in your mm. life that might be very, very unhelpful to you and even unhealthy and unhealthy so just be really really careful uh, careful of what that strap what that wearable is creating with regards to expectations positive and negative mm. so how do you tell if you're overloaded if you've got a device at the moment how do you tell if you're overloaded well i'd say like it comes back to that you know are you using it for a specific goal you know and you're using specific metrics from that to get to that goal or is it just like a generic thing and you're checking like a range of metrics every day um, and what I'd really check in is what's your emotional connection to that data? You know, when you're getting told, oh, that was good, are you feeling better about yourself? Are you told that was bad, are you feeling bad about yourself? I think that's when we can start to tell that it's overwhelming, that we're over reliant on it. Um, how often are you checking it? Uh, things like that. So we want to get away from that data overload and check in on like our emotional connection to that data. Exactly. And also, we've kind of alluded to this, but do. Be careful of comparison because mm. no one sits there um, and records their terrible day, right? This is the highlight reels the of highlight social, reels, me- social yeah. media. Um, and I think the same is of fitness data. So if you're in like running groups or, or whatever, you're seeing people post their fitness tracker updates. That's probably the best performance they've had in a while. That's why they're posting it, right? No one posts the crappy stuff that's happening in their life. And the same goes for their fitness trackers. Um, So we really need to be aware of how and why we're using it um, and how we're posting it because, you know, some people are going to be posting these things to validate themselves, which is what social media does all the time. Mm. So again, just have that um, that, uh, different perception. Have a wider understanding of what's really, really going on when you see other people posting their stuff and also how you feel. When you post, if you are one of those people that post their their runs, because I do this, right? And I'm going to put my hand up right now. I don't, I don't post, I use Strava. So the only thing I ever use is Strava for my runs. And actually I said to James the other day, I'm going to run without Strava today. And you know what? I just had a blast. And then I ran without Strava again yesterday and it was just amazing. And the reason I've done that is because I could see myself, I was a bit tired, um... I was feeling a bit low on energy basically for weeks so my runs weren't as good and I was monitoring them in Strava and I was thinking, I don't like that, I'm not as fast, that's not as good, blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't present with the run. I thought, sod that, Mm. I'm just actually going to get rid of Strava for a couple of runs and see how I feel. And I feel amazing. So I haven't posted my runs for a while. And again, I'm learning this too. So as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking, God, I do that. I post my little pictures of a really fast Strava run and then sometimes I won't post it because it was a bit slower. So if I'm doing it, everyone else is doing it as well and I'm making a little commitment to myself right now not to do that. Mm. Well, it's interesting that. actually that they're close. So yeah, yeah, it comes back to this, like if you've got a goal, if you're in training for an event, of course yes. you're going to want the feedback data yes. and make sure you are improving your training cycle is working. Yes, that's right. right. But if we're working out just for the pleasure of working out, do we necessarily need that human-machine interface in between the experience. Exactly. Or do we just want to have the experience exactly. as a human being? Which is why I've just made that commitment. I know. Yeah. So here's how to have a good relationship with your tracker. I mean, first of all, before we get into, into these um, points, I'd just like, do check in, like check in on that emotional relationship with the data and, and how that data is affecting you in an emotional way. Because if it is affecting you on an emotional level, then you probably do need to adjust your relationship with your tracker, I'd say. Mm. you agree, Claire? Yeah, I would. I really would. I was actually just thinking then, um, going a bit off piece, and this is for another conversation. But I suppose with um, My Fitness Pal and all those, if you're tracking all that, 
I'm just thinking about how much we track. Mm. If you're tracking, like, here's the thing. I'm not saying that we shouldn't track calories, especially at the beginning of our journey, because it's very, very important. And we should be looking at macros as well. But we're tracking that. And then we add this whole other layer of complexity with wearables. I'm just like, my goodness, like this complete overload of, of our head. So, yeah. Anyway, so... Here's how to have a good relationship with your tracker. Yeah. Know what you're using it for and what the metrics mean, right? So you're knowing what to do with the data that contributing towards a specific goal. Just don't get sucked into measuring everything that you can on there. No, you can work out without it. Yes. I know. I know it might be a bit scary. Just for the joy of the workout. But just for the joy of the workout. I'm going to set you a challenge. If you are... If you are listening to this thinking, oh, I'm probably a bit obsessed with this and I might actually be a di- bit disconnected from how I actually feel and the joy of just doing it, then I would encourage you to just do one run, one workout without it and be very present with it and mm. see how you feel. Because there was a time when we didn't have these and we were still fit and healthy. We still got the results. So you can do it without it. Yeah. Remember that you know your body better than a computer yeah, does. So to this. you can use the tech, but it does put that barrier in there. It's putting a barrier between us and our own natural intuition. So just remember that. Mm. Ta- track your data, but don't take it as gospel. Gospel. He, honestly, this mm. is huge because like James said, you're going to get different readings from loads and loads of different wearables. Um, so yes, it's important that you have metrics in place, but just remember that it doesn't control you and that there will be different readings for everything. So it is not gospel. And that, that's the worrying thing. People will take it as gospel, but it's not. Yeah. Last one is, just because it's not recorded doesn't mean it didn't happen. <laughs> I love this. You know, every workout's valid. You don't need to have the, the digital proof yes. of it. You've experienced it. So, you know, yeah. I love that. You don't need to share it. You don't need to tell the world about about every run, bike rides. I know. And that's that's the thing. I'm laughing my socks off because actually, you know, I I haven't been sharing that. I'm in a in a wonderful group, um, an alcohol free group, and I haven't actually been sharing anything in there in the last week about my workouts and. To a degree, yes, it's really, really great to do that. And I'll, I'll probably go in actually today and share a little bit. But um, I'm not feeling right now like I need to go and share every single workout with every single person. But uh, because I'm being accountable to myself and I feel like I've got a lot of accountability to myself right now. My motivation is pretty high. My discipline is pretty high. Um, but I'm also not taking a selfie. I'm not taking a photo of me doing it. I'm just, I think I, I'm just in a phase right now where I'm in the flow of doing it just because it feels good and because I am getting the results, I am getting stronger, I am getting fitter. um, And I am, um, yeah, I just, I'm enjoying the process of it rather than having to share it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because there are times in my life when I do that too. But um, there is quite a freedom that I'm experiencing right now of not doing that. Mm, Love that. I love that. I hope you found that useful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Are you yes. are you engaged to your fitness tracker, or, or even perhaps <laughs> married? married to it, or are you ready for the divorce from it? Um, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> We'd love to hear your thoughts on it. As always, team at the Midlife Mentors, do uh, drop us a nice review, like and share the, the podcast. We really appreciate that. Yeah, and um, Claire will reveal this this mysterious information about how you could potentially join us live at Soho House this week. Yeah, if you want to meet us live and you're around lo- London, um, I haven't quite figured it. I'm going to be really honest <laughs> and, and share this as well. I, I knew there was a catch. Yeah. I haven't quite figured it out myself yet, but by the end of today, if you're not in the Midlife Mentors community group on Facebook, by the end of today... Perhaps, perhaps you'll email us and then we'll, we'll put write all the names on bits of paper and put them in a yeah, hat or something. Yeah, I might, actually, I might actually email it. I don't know the entire scope of this yet, but you know, uh, flying by the seat of my pants. We'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it. We make things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I also just wanted to share with you that we have got our amazing, amazing retreat in Ibiza coming up in just over a month, 19th to 22nd of October. Uh, it's at Six Senses, which is utterly, utterly stunning, off the scale. If you are feeling like you need to disconnect from the world, from your from your trackers, if you are feeling like you need to disconnect from the world, this busy, busy, crazy life, um, and get your mojo back after the summer, because I know a lot of us overindulge, and all of our routines and habits are kind of like thrown up in the air. So if you are looking for a real reboot in body, mind, and soul, you must, must, must come to our retreat in Ibiza. We've got a few spaces left. It's We're going to be in a private residence 
um, with us. We're all going to be together. We're going to be sharing everything about around um, thriving at midlife um, and this second act of our life. So would love to see you there. I'll put the link in the show notes to that. And also, if you can't make that, we do have... Uh, the midlife method, which we took the kind of summer off. We've now got those cohorts running again. We've just started one today. If you want in on the next cohort, then just let us know. Team at the midlife mentors.com. Again, this is our flagship award winning coaching program, um, and it really helps you in every way physically, mentally, and emotionally and get the results that you want without having to make massive, massive sacrifices. So that's not what we want. We want balance at midlife. We want to enjoy midlife. We want to know some tools and tricks that we can do um, in our busy lives. So that's the midlife method. If you are excited about that and you want to regain control, then message us. And that's it. Fab. That is it. Okay, that's until us. next time, which we will record this and next <laughs> this week, so it won't be late. It'll come over the weekend. Yeah, sending you so much love. Bye. You've been listening to the Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.